There are certain places on any Rust map that provide a specific resource or facility that is desirable. The snow has lots of nodes, the outpost is a safe zone with a drone market, gas stations have recyclers, you get the point. Often you need to decide at the start of your wipe which of these you want to build near and take advantage of. However, for this wipe, I wanted to use all of them from one central base. I would build my main base roughly center of all the positions I was planning on using and build a pipeline out to the smaller bases which can feed loot back to my home base. Unfortunately, this is much easier said than done. All right, let's get this going. Dude, no, please, you don't need to kill me. You don't need to kill me. Don't, oh my God, please, I got nothing. I literally just spawned. Do not need to do this. Don't do it, don't. There's a red crate there. Surely this has got something I can use. Oh my God, perfect. Oh, maybe not. No, no, thank you, no, thank you. Crossbow as well? There's a guy here too? Bro, there's people everywhere. I mean, I could go for that Tommy guy, but probably not the smartest play, if we're honest with ourselves. Given the ambitious project that was ahead of us, we needed to be smart about where we built the main base. This would be the heart of the operation, and we would have all the smaller bases feeding into it, so it needed to be as central as possible. Looking at the map, I decided on this location here. Roughly equidistant to the snow and the coast with a fishing village, opening the door for both farming and large oil rig runs. I think I'm going to build main base just on this little hill here. I want an area big enough for a compound, so we're going to try and make that work. With the main base location secured, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Rust Clash is an online gambling website, so this one's for my 18 plus viewers. They have a variety of deposit methods such as CSGO, Dota, and Rust skins, as well as crypto and credit card options. They are the only site that allows for direct PayPal cash out and crypto, and the site gives away over $25,000 a week through their rain feature. Choose from case battles, slots, the upgrader, Plinko, and of course, opening cases. Use code Yexum today to unlock both rakeback and daily cases, which can be claimed every 24 hours hours for free and also use code Yexim at the deposit tab for an extra 5% bonus. We now turned our attention to progression. See, I had not a single blueprint on this server, which meant that I was unable to craft the industrial parts that were essential to making the loot move across the map like I wanted. It also meant that I couldn't craft any guns to defend myself, so figured that that would be my first order of business in acquiring. Alright, let's just craft ourselves a level 1 because we're going to need it eventually. Never mind. We'll cancel that level one and we'll go and see if we can get ourselves a gun. That's a custom. It would be very nice to get a custom. Ugh. Oh, at least you left our stuff. That's actually nice. We need this bear for a little bit of low grade. <sighs> and now he's going to run like 500 meters away, goddammit. Where even is that? Oh, he's right here. It's fine. Bro, we do not need to fight. Stop, stop, stop. Go stop, 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 stop. Stop, stop, stop. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, go stop. Oh, you're lucky, man. You're lucky. There's no way he opens this door, right? There's a literal hole in the middle of it that he can see me through. Oh, that's so dumb from his part. Easy. There was no reason for him to open that door. Like, he was not benefiting at all from that. I don't think I've got enough tools to get through this wall. I'm going to open this box and hope that there's tools in here that I can use to break the wall down. Oh, that's so perfect. I'll come back and yoke out the TC so I can pick up the workbench. 300 scrap? Oh my god. I'm glad I cancelled the crafting on that level 1 before because now I've just got this guy's anyway. And that 300 scrap is almost probably enough to get myself a level 2 even, which is extremely nice of this guy. 
With our progression conveniently accelerated to a level 2 workbench, it was time to meet our enemies, and they lived a lot closer than I was comfortable with. Wow, he hit me too. Again? Well, I'm screwed. Well, okay. Okay. Daisy. Who's Daisy, bro? Does Daisy live here? Wow, okay. Daisy lives here. We have met our neighbor. Oh, dude, there's two of them. Oh, you're kidding me, dude. Yo, hello. Hello? Bro, bro, bro I want to I want talk. I want to talk with okay. you, eh? Okay, okay. What's, What's up? your mate with the, with the custom? No, man, I'm solo. That was not with me. You're solo? Yeah, man. Ah, good job, good job. How many people in your team? Wow, okay. All right, Moises. So, we had Daisy and Moises, but trust me, there's plenty more names in this group. For simplicity's sake, let's just call them the neighbors. They lived but a stone's throw away from where I'd set up shop and were most certainly going to be a pain in the ass. It seemed like for now they also only had bows and crossbows, so it was going to be a bit of a rat race to see who could get guns first and stunt the other's progression. My game plan was to rush keycards while also building up scrap, so I headed to the junkyard and the lighthouse as well as the harbor and got myself both green and blue cards. After building up my base a bit to prevent an early game raid, I was running the nearby path to farm barrels when I heard a group taking out the scientists in the Arctic Research Base. An opportunity that I had to try and capitalize on. Someone's taking Arctic. Actually convenient. How many are there? I'm pretty sure there's at least two. That dude only has a crossbow. Does this guy even see me? This guy doesn't know. This guy doesn't know I'm here. Disappointing, but worth a shot. Luckily, we wouldn't have to wait long before our next opportunity to get ahead of the neighbors. Airdrop. I might be able to get to that in time. It'll probably land before I get there, but we can try. There's light under it. That's so unfortunate. He's getting attacked by the bear. That's so annoying, dude. Why give me an M39? I mean, I'll take it, but I can't research it. All right, let's head towards power plant and try and get a red card because maybe we can do an oil run or something if we get a red, which would definitely accelerate our progress for sure. I wonder what those guys are up to. There's three of them now. There's three of them there. I'm going to dump these. Maybe we'll fight them. Limit their progress potentially. P2? Okay. Oh, that's a saw. That's not good. Not only had my neighbors progressed to more viable guns quicker than I had, there was also more of them than I had previously met. This led to me dying to them time and time again, but also allowed them to progress significantly quicker than me on the base building front. Something that would soon be their downfall. After many, many hours of rolling with the punches, a shop was selling semi-automatic rifle for a bit of sulfur and I knew I had to take it. Researching it at the bandit camp and finally having a gun that we could craft whenever we wanted. With this new arsenal, I got a red card from the power plant, then decided if I was to once again get ahead of my neighbors, I would have to either raid them or get better guns than them. 
both of which have the potential to happen from running oil rig. All right, the crate is actually up on oil rig, but I'm pretty sure somebody's just left one thing in it because it's been up for so long and it hasn't respawned or anything. So I'm pretty sure it's due to respawn pretty soon, hopefully. Hopefully no one's camping on it. I might have to go clear it. There's no scientist, so I'm fairly sure it's clear. I'll have to go check the crate. Well, that's nice. Added bonus. Yeah, there's scientist bodies here. It's definitely been cleared out and taken. There's got to be... We'll have to check the crate. There's definitely one thing left in it. Yep, there you go. I'll just throw this airdrop, and if it's any good, I'll take the stuff home while I'm waiting for the oil rig to respawn and then come back. Yeah, we'll take this load home. We may as well. Oh, hello. Well, that was easier than it should have been. He only had a revolver and double barrel? What? Oh, okay. This guy had an MP5. We'll take it home. Just quickly deep all of this and we'll head straight back. I think that's all of them. Red room. Please be good. A bolty. Let's do this. Another bolty. Come on, dude. x ammo, that's actually kind of good. We need that. Another bolty? Dude, are you kidding? Uh, the turret's actually decent because we'll set that up. We can put the uh, broken bolty in the turret. It's kind of a mid crate. Is that a guy there? There's a guy there. Surely he doesn't have a gun. I don't think he has a gun. I'm not going to go near him, though, because he might... Yep, he has a gun. Oh. Dude, there's no way. What? This was our introduction to our second enemy. Now, although I wasn't sure where he lived, given that the shop on the base next to where he killed me was completely out of stock at the time, but not long after this death, it was selling exactly eight explosive 5.56 ammo, something that was on my body from the oil rig run. I was extremely confident that this was his residence on the water here. Something to keep in mind for later. For now, it appeared as though my neighbors had gotten offline, and I was about to realize something about their base that had massive potential. Are any of these foundations, these overhangs that are sticking out? Because I could soft pick them. I think it blocks in a refinery in there, but I might be able to get in there and see what we can do. I think I need like 7,000 wood to soft side into one foundation. Hey, bro, you want to help me with something? Yes, yes, yes. All right, you running it with a mace? Just you, you running at me with a mace does not make me think you're friendly, dude. Oh, my bad. Here, here, I got okay, it. Okay, okay. If you want to help, we can get into this base possibly. Yeah, I don't exactly trust you. Um. All right. What do you got to lose? Fine. Uh, I'll get loot for myself. Wait, wait, is that like a south spot? Yep. Okay, bet. I'm gonna come oh, you think you get second chances after saying no? No, I'm sorry. I don't trust. I don't trust a lot of people in this game. Ah, uh, no, nah, fair them. enough. All right, come help. After offering one random naked to help me hit the foundation, there was suddenly another, and then another, and then another. With the extra pair of hands, we got through it in no time. So close. We got it. Let's go. Absolutely nothing, guys. Nothing yet. But the way that this base was designed was flawed, to say the least. They had raised the core part of their base up by half a foundation, meaning that by spearing through one more foundation, we could potentially hit loot. The issue with finding loot with strangers is that a lot of trust is required. Something that this game's not well known for. Oh! oh shit, man. Don't touch the loot! Oh, oh my god. Oh. I'm going and getting a gun. I might have to kill all these guys. 
Alright, uh, we could nothing. go. Oh, we could go up. You guys want to go up? Go up. What was in those boxes? Anything good? Oh, uh, oh there was uh, no, I, I, I have a bunch of wood. There was two rows of wood. This loot room was a bust and not worth killing my servants over. I was still gonna need them. We speeded to the top shelf for the same loot room, which at best had some shitty armor, then got proper settled in and beat our way through a sheet metal half floor. Finish off with Jackie. Finish it. Finish it with the Jackie. Let's finish it off. You ready? Yeah! Yeah. Okay, just tools. Oh, prim gear. Oh shit. Nothing good. Uh, nothing wait, good. Uh, wait, Not worth killing them over yet. Uh, all right, now, now just break the box. There's boxes break behind box. as well. Don't kill the dude. Do not kill the player, oh, please. Oh, all right, all right. oh fuck! I have auto clicker on. I have auto clicker on. Okay, there's nothing. We were now at a point where we were gonna have to use actual explosives. Fortunately, I had most of the sulfur I already needed for a couple of garage doors, so it wasn't long before we could finally eliminate these pests from the neighborhood. Bodies? Dude, there's heaps of them in here. Thank you. Oh my god. Low grade. Scrap. Dude. Look at this. You want some of this? Here, have some low grade. Oh. There's so much. Oh, 500 kids. Also this. Do you want some cloth? Oh, yeah. Oh my god. Just leave the loot for now. Oh my god, the sulfur. Look at the sulfur. Stuff up top as well. Oh my god. With the neighbors no longer a problem and the profits shared between me and my new friends, this area was now a lot nicer to live in. My neighbors got themselves established right next door to me and I began working on my base to get it to a point where I could start building the pipeline. I had to get my compound up before even thinking about making the external bases because these pipes were going to connect to my base to my gatehouses. While I build up the base a bit, I just wanted to remind you guys that my limited time mouse pad is only available for a few more days as of this video being uploaded. And after that, you're never gonna be able to get it again. This is my first ever piece of merch and I'm really happy with how the design and quality of it turned out. So if you don't wanna miss out on this piece of Yexum history, check the link in the description. Okay, somewhere around here, we need to throw down the first base, which is gonna be the gas station base. Basically, we're gonna use this base to depot anything we recycle, because this is the closest recycler we have on the map. It's our main recycler. We're gonna have this set up so that once I finish recycling, I can throw it all in here and I don't have to run it back home. It's more safe that way. Before we start fully committing to this pipeline as well, I'm actually gonna unlock electric furnace and large battery because I'm gonna need quite a lot of metal frags for the combiners and the windows and all the upkeep and every TC. So it'd be nice to have metal constantly cooking by itself while I'm just building it. So now with these powered on, it should be taking ores automatically in and then once they're cooked, it'll take them out automatically into this box here where it goes in and out of. Nice. Now, because the point at which the pipeline is going to connect is going to be this external gate here, we're going to put a box down here so that it works as a drop box that automatically puts loot into the main base, but as well as that, it brings all the loot from all the different pipes into the main base. Rather than it just sitting in the gatehouse, it comes all the way into these drop boxes here. With the external gatehouses built, I was at a point where I could begin the pipeline. Now, the way that this works is more complicated than it probably has to be. With a bit of testing, I found out a few things that was going to make this difficult to do over long distances, which is kind of exactly what I was planning on doing. Firstly, pipes can only reach 30 meters before needing an item that they can be plugged into. To combat this, I will be using combiners every 30 meters to extend the feed. The next issue is that combiners will decay if not in a tool cupboard range, so I'll also have to build TCs along the entire line of pipes. On top of this, combiners can be broken with only a few hits from a melee tool, meaning I also have to put these combiners inside the TC and close it up with a window. 
Having to mess around with combiners and pipes and stuff while the tool cupboard is exposed certainly isn't ideal. The first TC, the first bit of pipeline from the base. Here we go. That's not good. Dude, there's so many of them. What the hell? Oh, they full sealed it off. I'm going to have to raid it. After that relatively minor setback, I began extending the line, one tool cupboard at a time. Because of building restrictions from the monuments, I had to go the long way around to get to the back of the gas station. It wasn't an issue, but it was going to increase the pipe length by a considerable amount. I also finished off my compound and built a shooting floor before getting just across the road with my pipeline and running into our second setback. There's no window on that other TC, dude. Oh, God. There's two of them as well. Oh, dude. Surely they don't take over that TC there. No, dude. Building blocked. They did take the TC over. Not gonna lie, I don't really want to use the little sulfur that I have to blow it up, so I'll just go around. Dude, I can't even go around because this base is here. I can't get between this base and the TC I've lost. Oh my god. Wait, these doors are wood. Yeah, we'll raid that. We can raid that. Loaded. You know what? I might actually use this base as like the first depot base that we have. I mean, we may as well. It's like literally exactly what I'm going to build as the depot bases anyway. If the pipes are going to go through here, there's no harm in adding an extra depot base. So the way that these depot bases work, they each have a battery connected to a solar panel on the roof. That then powers the conveyor that will push the loot from this back to my main base. So it's pretty simple. I can just throw loot in this box here, which has the pipes connected, and it will go straight back to my main base via all the other TCs. Now, from this first depot base, we just had to build to the gas station, which went relatively okay. From here, it was all about getting on the grind and finishing this pipeline. Through the power of editing, what took many, many hours of pain and building has conveniently been sped up for you into a couple of seconds. I can't really stress enough how difficult and time consuming this was to actually do, but after it all, we managed to get our third depot base set up in the deep snow, a perfect location for farming nodes. However, now a new problem had reared its head with our pipeline. So now this one should be transferring the loot back to the main base. Why isn't that working? Why is this one not moving the loot back? Oh my god, dude, please. So, I think it's either one of these pipes is like a ghost pipe and it's actually not there, but it looks like it's there. Or, more likely, is that there's too many combiners in the feed. I think there might be a limit on how many combiners can be used before you need to get to a box or another conveyor. So it might just be that I have to add a box on one of these external TCs about halfway along the line. And this should repeat the pipe instead of the combiners that I'm using. If this doesn't work, then I actually have no idea. Yes, it's working. Thank God for that, dude. With the farming pipeline completed and functioning properly, I moved some spare kits and my jackhammers to the base along with a level 1 workbench. This easy farming sped up the completion of the last two pieces of the pipeline immensely. We built a line branching off the farm base to the outpost in case we wanted to use a safe recycler or make a purchase there. Then also built a line off on the opposite direction of the main base to a boat base down in the water. Well, I mean, it was intended as a boat base, so I could run oil rig and safely depot on the shore. However, given its close proximity to someone that I had on the hit list, it was likely going to be pretty convenient for something else that would happen soon in the area. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Before we could get any revenge, we had to get the blueprints for the high tier explosives, and fortunately for me, I had a significant amount of components saved up that I could recycle for scrap so I could tech tree exactly what I needed. Even more conveniently though is that we had a base right next to the gas station that was set up like it was made for this moment. Are you taking the piss? So many people around, bruh. 
And he was trying to steal my recycles. Now with this scrap, I can throw it straight in this base here and it'll go back to the main base. And then I can grab the rest of the recycles and do them straight away. Without risking too much. Oh my god, this depot box has filled up so much more than I thought it had. That's something I've got to keep on top of because all the bases go to this box. So I need to make sure it's empty. But... In saying that, it should be enough scrap now to tech tree to all the explosives I need. So with the explosives researched, we had a few more things to do before we could raid the water base that stole our oil rig earlier. On the to-do list was farm enough sulfur, get an AK that we could research, craft an AK for the raid, farm enough scrap for a minicopter, use the minicopter to scout the base and assess the best possible way to raid before finally completing the mission and getting revenge. Step one though, sulfur. Alright, let's have a look. Is he online? Oh my god, he's online. I didn't expect him to be online right now. We need to get out of here before we lose this mini. I'm not sure how many of them live there, but they've got code locks, so we'll expect more than one. But they are online, so this raid just got more interesting. I think I know how I want to raid it as well. I want to just pummel through the top side of their honeycomb. Okay, so the way I'm thinking of raiding this is literally just a one life raid, flying the minicopter into the compound and pummeling as much as I can. I've got plenty of rockets to pummel, so I don't think I'll be short of explosives, but it is risky going as a solo to an online raid and only having one shot at it. Because if I die, I can't get back into the compound because I'm flying in with a minicopter, so send it, I guess. <laughs> Slow down, That door wasn't even locked. And that's how quickly it can go wrong as a solo. Don't forget to pick yourself up a mouse pad. They aren't available for much longer. And once they're gone, they're gone for good. Also, check this video out where I lived in a completely automated cliff base for a wipe. 